In the beginning, there was the cemetery, and then the Hebrew Benevolent Society of San Antonio. By 1874, the society becomes Temple Beth El. Rabbi Emeritus Samuel Stahl explains why people join a synagogue. Most uh, congregants join a temple for three basic needs. They want a place where they can worship on the high holy days. They want a school for their children to be educated in Judaism, if they have children. And three, they want a rabbi to be available for life cycle ceremonies from, from birth to death. And do most congregants, from your perspective, a lot of years here, uh, have a sense of what it costs to uh, run a, a congregation? I don't think they realize the, the large overhead this congregation has to bear. Uh, you know, because we have a congregation now between, uh, I think there's about 960 families, 970 families. It requires a large staff, a commodious building, people to take care of the building, and so on. Temple Beth El and, and most other uh, Jewish congregations fund themselves through annual dues. For a while, I think this congregation's experimented with having voluntary uh, payments voluntary contributions as a major means of sustaining the congregation. I don't think it worked. We still have in the Jewish tradition this tzedakah principle. Tzedakah is not voluntary giving. You're supposed to give 10% of your income uh, for charitable purposes and out of that should come your temple membership. Uh, but that's, that's, uh, that's the way it's, it, it's best sustained. The temple's annual budget runs into the millions of dollars. How is it financed? It takes wealthy members, and there's another challenge that we're facing, and all congregations are facing, not just Temple of Bethel, that the, the millennial generation is not into institutional anything, especially institutional religion. The significance is that, uh, that Judaism has eternal values. These are values that don't change. The, the fact that people are made in the image of God, that uh, we must care for each other, that we must uh, find meaning in our lives beyond fulfilling our basic biological urges, and so on. It is the everlasting light, a light that hangs above the bima in temples around the world. But what is it? This is the one light, as I say, it's because it's called eternal, it doesn't go out. It's called Ner Tamid in Hebrew. Uh, it was uh, first mentioned in the Bible in connection with the building of the tabernacle that was carried through the, the wilderness by the children of Israel, that uh, there had to be a light that was perpetually burning in the, in the tabernacle. And then in the temples in Jerusalem, the first and second temples, the light was burning. And this is one of the symbols that was taken over from the ancient temple and to uh, convey to them the importance of a Jewish congregation, of a synagogue, of a temple. That's a difficult challenge today. More than, it, it's always, that, that's always been the difficult generation, the 20s and 30s, because you know, they're, many of them are struggling financially, they, their families have not uh, been formed yet, or if, if they're, they're newly married, they haven't had kids, so they don't need a religious school. That generation has always been a challenge, but it's even more of a challenge today. What do you say to them? What do you say to them? Uh, I, luckily, I've retired. <laughs> That's why I, I maintain. <laughs> I maintain that every uh, generation requires a rabbi that knows its needs, and I knew the needs of the people I served. I hope I do the needs of their, and I think uh, I'm, I'm very uh, hopeful and uh, optimistic that Rabbi Mara Nathan, who's going to be coming here this summer. Uh, will know, does know, and will know the needs of the new generation that she has to attract to Temple Beth El. We were looking for a community where we could be ourselves and feel at home. And from the moment I stepped off the plane um, at the airport, I felt that um, every single person I met was genuine and warm and welcoming, and I felt immediately at ease. Well, clearly the synagogue was founded at a moment where Jews were coming into San Antonio. They had already been here for a while, but they were craving more a sense of a, a solid community. So making sure that that idea of community um, remains relevant and 
not certainly exciting, but really meaningful um, and comforting to people at high and low moments along the way, that people feel that whoever they are, whatever place they're coming from in their own Jewish exploration, that this is a warm and welcoming place that will accept them. Uh, that's one of the most important things to me. Initially, it shouldn't be with the end goal of membership at the synagogue, but a greater, more altruistic goal of Jewish engagement in general. And I think if we're able to help people see that being part of a Jewish community is valuable in and of itself, and that the congregation isn't just looking at them as people to help pay the bills, but souls, you know, people who are part of our community and make it richer, um, not financially, but spiritually and intellectually. and um, and cre creatively that um, people will want to affiliate. As Rabbi Nathan explains, the everlasting light is a lot more than just a light. Which is it's not just the physical light that's up on the bima, but there's an internal light that um, burns within all of us. And the only way to keep that flame you know, burning bright is to um, tend to it, right? Just like a fire needs to be watched carefully and um, and taken care of and guarded, um, our involvement in learning, our involvement in spiritual enterprises, our involvement in taking care of other people, and doing that in a Jewish context keeps that flame bright and strong. My goal is, first and foremost, community building and making sure that um, the clergy and the staff and the leadership and the community at large take care of each other, are kind to each other, and that we all I mean, we're all going to have our differences, but that we respect each other and are happy to be together as one big extended Bethel community. From the perspective of the synagogue delivering services, it's truly 24-7 because the temple needs to be there when the congregant needs the temple. And so while it is a religious institution, it is in the business of selling religion and being there for its customers and being there for its congregants. And that is a full-time job for a congregation, whether it's 900 families or 1,100 families, and it's 24-7. Without the proper leadership, uh, the temple's not gonna grow, and it needs to grow and, and be the center of Reform Judaism in San Antonio. Temple, to coin a phrase, is a very, very big tent. And catering to one group or another we would be doomed to fail. Rabbi Nathan has broad appeal across the board and she will do a magnificent job. There are many reasons to support the temple. The most important will be they will need the lights on someday. They will need the phone call answered someday. And the temple will be for them, but only if they're there for the temple now. And in my heart, the temple is, is the beacon of my Judaism. It's, it's my people. It's who we are, it's what we stand for, it's who my, my children were raised to. Just, it is everything to me. If we, if we want a temple of the type that we've built through the years and the elected representatives on the board set the budget, the, the representatives of the congregation try to be judicious in, in what is approved in a budget and every year it's, the board is very careful with the budget but it does take a lot of money to keep a congregation, keep a, a building and an institution and a religious school going. Could you envision a day when it wasn't here? Yes, uh, of course. That's, that's the part of the fear that drives giving uh, to make sure that that day never comes. I would be devastated if anything happened to our temple. I mean, I always want to know that it's here. If my children ever come back to San Antonio, you know, I want this to still be their temple. Well, without the support of all of us, this temple is not going to be here. I mean, it, it, we just need a lot of support, meaning help, meaning uh, money, meaning time. Uh, we just, we all need to pitch in, and I think we're really at the place now that if we don't pitch in, we're we're going to see results that we're not going to be proud of. We need to encourage the youth to join and to get their kids here and active. And it's right now our temple average age is 65 years old. We need to get that down. That's the future of our temple. What I think, uh, what I wish people would know about Temple Bethel are the ever-changing programs to keep temple vibrant, uh, current, uh, alive, and that the temple is very open and receptive and, and look at look at 
the welcome, how welcoming we are as Jews by choice and all, people of all colors of the rainbow. I think it's very important on, on different levels. It's important to some people on a spiritual level. Uh, the mission statement of the temple talks about Tikkun Olam, which is, literally means uh, repairing the world. So beside the religious aspects, the temple does a lot of things in the community that people are, are not necessarily aware of. The temple is the house of God. Uh, it's in the mission statement that we create, reform, house of God. Uh, we are residing in the house of God, um, but I think it's incumbent upon us to make sure that the temple thrives and for the people that will reside in the house of God after us. Um, to me, it's not about keeping the lights on in the temple, it's about keeping the light on, the near Tommy, the eternal light, uh, the passing of the torch from generation to generation. So the temple will survive uh, for generations to come, but we have to make sure that we're good stewards of the temple and make sure that the opportunities are available for future generations that, that we had. Happy 140th birthday, Temple Bethel. Happy 140th birthday, Temple Bethel. Happy 140th anniversary to Temple Bethel. Happy 140th birthday, Temple Bethel. Happy 140th birthday, Temple Bethel, and many, many more. Happy 140th birthday to Temple Bethel and all of its congregants. Happy 140th birthday, Temple Bethel.